If you ask me who I am, I can easily say that I'm an Indian who immigrated to Canada about seven years ago. But if you ask me where I come from, that answer is far more unclear. Before Canada, I lived in Oman for about five years, where I considered Oman to be a successful destination in my lifetime. Before Oman, I used to live in Dubai for a couple of years, and before Dubai, I lived in Bahrain, where I was born. All these countries are practically beside each other in the Middle East. However, I can never consider quite these countries as my home, just for, you, for example. I consider them as successful destinations in my eventual journey. However, after seven long years of experiences in Canada, I can start to say that in a way, Canada is where I come from. However, when I first arrived here, that feeling of home, that feeling of belonging was almost non-existent. In this speech, I'll be detailing a collection of my initial experiences, also known as Anna, and how I realized at a certain point that Canada is where I belonged. All right, so let's move all the way back to 2012, back when we actually thought the world was gonna end or whatever. So let's move all the back, way back to 2012 on my first day in seventh grade. So, I stood up to ask a question to the class, and then everyone around me started laughing. And they started laughing, and I was just so confused about why people were laughing, and I just couldn't understand the expressions of all those new faces in a new country around me. That's when I realized, and my teacher said, Orsh, you don't need to stand up to ask a question. It's perfectly fine if you just sit down. Now that is something I had not known before, because in Oman, what usually occurs is that when you have to ask a question, you stand up in order to pay respect to the teacher. And so I realized that in Canada, that tradition was not exactly adopted. So I realized I had a lot to learn about the traditions that Canada had and that Canada used. All right, so that's just pretty much at 9 a.m. in the morning. Let's fast forward all the way to 11.50 a.m. or lunch, to be exact. Now in Oman, what happened is usually I play a game called cricket, and it would be pretty fun too. But when I came to lunch on my first day, what ended up occurring is I had to play a very tough, scary, and unknown sport, basketball. Now, as a seventh foot guy, and then almost, almost seventh foot guy at, in seventh grade, you'd expect me that I would tower over everybody, that I would dominate and be the best player in the game. However, that did not exactly occur. I probably missed my five, I probably missed my first five shots, and I was benched for a much smaller but better player. Now, we hear, we hear about benching, and pretty much benching means you're put away to the sidelines, you're not allowed to play. Now, we hear about benching in professional sports, but imagine being benched in seventh grade. That hurts a lot. So, as a result, I felt pretty down. As I was realized that how much I had to learn and how much I still had to take and grasp about Canadian sports. And that felt, on a certain level, like I did not quite belong, belong here at this point. All right, let me give you another story. So I was in, on a weekend, I was in my local youth group for some classes, and there was a trivia question that came up that just asked me to name any random basketball player. Now, I did not know much about basketball, but I had heard about one guy, Kobe Bryant. So the problem was with Kobe Bryant is that I had never said his name out loud before. I would read him in some newspaper, in some Amani newspaper, that said Kobe Bryant. And so I completely botched the pronunciation. I said Kobe Bryant. <laughs> and to be honest, in my defense at the time, that made perfect sense. What is this? Is this an ear low B or is this an ear low? <laughs> when you're feeling a vibe, do you say I'm feeling a vibe B or do you say I'm feeling a vibe? You say I'm feeling a vibe, right? So at the time, the pronunciation was justified. However, I realized that Canada and its language had many idiosyncrasies that I didn't quite understand. And so it made me feel a little insecure because I couldn't quite properly converse in their language. It made me feel like I didn't belong there on a certain level and I had a ton of learning to do to get to that point. The moment I started to realize that Canada was probably where I belonged wasn't at some big celebration, it wasn't at some big function where you celebrated diversity and belonging. Rather, it was simply when I pronounced the word video. So what usually occurs to new people, actually, I wouldn't say usually, but what sometimes occurs to new people in Canada is that when they come, especially Indians and some Germans that I've heard of, they often mispronounce the letter V for W. So I would always mispronounce the word, the letter V, and I can see like some people like smiling here, so it makes some sense. 
So I would mispronounce the word, the letter V for W. And as a result, what would occur is, I used to mispronounce words such as van for wham. And that hurts, like that actually hurts for me. <laughs> so it's, for example, when I would go into elementary school and I would have these reading tests and I would kill to do perfect on them. And then my teacher, every time after them would tell me, Arsh, you just couldn't get that the sound. And that would hurt on a certain level because if I couldn't converse in that language properly, and for my friends, it was playful jokes, but for me, it was something far more serious than that. And I felt that I still had a lot of learning to do. And I was unsure if I could get to that point where I can just talk and no one would notice that maybe I do or do not belong here. One day, after five years about deliber of deliberation and specifically making sure that I had nailed the V sound, one day I said the word video, which I, can, I think you guys can notice now, properly, but unintentionally. And that lack of intention is one of the is a key factor there because I didn't care to specifically care for the sound, but instead I just said it normally. And in a way this gave me a sense of pride because I could relax now and I could converse with a sense of pride. When I arrived in August of 2012, the sun set in 9 p.m., which I was not used to because in Oman usually what would occur is that the sun was set at five. And that often gave me a sense of non-belonging where things were just so much different from where I used to be. However, after a collection of experiences or Anna, to be once again specific, I've grown and I've felt to understand more and more of what shapes this country. I'm now a Canadian citizen and I can vote for great politicians and I can affect change within this country. Altogether, now anytime I hear anyone say the word video, I can only smile and laugh. Thank you very much.